I hope that you guys can see my screen now. So in the last lesson, we learned about int data type. Let me check that which document would hold it. No, this one. So we discussed this data type the other day, which is int. We were dealing with numbers. These numbers are basically whole numbers, or you can also call them integers. But when we have to deal with this kind of <coughs> numbers, which are not complete numbers, and which are not whole numbers, which have decimal point values in that, we can't use int statement for that. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of that. You remember that in the last lesson, we uh, also did not do that, uh, what do we call it? Division problem. Uh, we did not do the division problem because the problem again that I wanted to discuss before doing that was this real numbers. So let the Python open and then I will explain you what I meant with that. So you were using two variables to store some value into that and the process was simple. You were asking your computer to get you an input Mm, just one moment, please. <clears throat> okay. So, so I share. yes, you can see my screen now. Okay. So you were asking that uh, enter a number, something like that. And you had to do this two times. Let's say first I give the number five, and now I'm going to do it with for another number, which is again int input. And I would say enter second number. And second number, let's say that I enter uh, two. So now one number is five and the other number is two. Let's say that I want to divide five with two. I would say print A divided by B. And it gives me this answer. Can you tell me what this answer is? 2.5. Okay. 2.5. Let's say that if I write a program that is like calculating the division first. So I say that is division and that is equal to a divided by b okay and i also tell that div is an let's say integer and now i write now i ask you to write print div what answer do you think this is going to give me so division is equal to a divided by b and you have already you already got the answer for a divided by b. But now what do you think the answer would be? If I did this, what would be the answer? We are saying that div is equal to a divided by b. And we already know the answer for a divided by b. The divide answer for a divided by b is 2.5, right? Yeah. So now if I do this, print div, what is this going to be equal to? Vajiha, you might want to say something. Two point five, right? Waalaikum. Waalaikum Zayan. How are you? Fine. Okay, so we are doing this. Uh, let me tell you what is that. Uh, we are doing with. Uh, we are trying to understand that what. Uh, how can we treat the numbers? And in the last lesson that we had on Monday. We discussed that the numbers can be treated by using INT, integer keyword. INT specifies that the input that we are having, that is basically a number. Okay. Yes, Malik, you want to say something?
And now I was asking just a simple question. And that question was that if I divided this number, A divided by B, I already actually know what is the answer of A divided by B. The answer of A divided by B is basically 2.5 because I have stored A to be, uh, what do you call it? Five and B to be two. And what I see is that the answer should be 2.5. Oh. What I see that the answer should be 2.5. But what's happening in there is that uh, the number that we are trying to get answer for, it might not be equal to 2.5. It would be uh, different. It is not going to be 2.5. I have already got that the A divided by B is 2.5. But now when I tell that I introduce it as a variable, which is div, Div is going to help me calculate the division. And the division says int is equal, to, uh, division is equal to A divided by B, but it is an integer now, okay? So let's say what the answer would be. If I will press enter now, I might get an answer which is not 2.5. Previously, I know that A divided by B, which is five divided by two is 2.5. But now it might not be 2.5. It would be something else. So let's see what it is. What answer did we get now? Two, it is down in the top. Two. Two. Yes, Malik, you have raised your hand. You want to say something? The number is rounding like it has rounded the number. The number is not actually going to be rounded. There is something else that is happening. Uh, something that is happening is that this uh, number 2.5, it has two parts. The first part is the number before the decimal point, And the second part is the number after the decimal point. So when you treat some number and ask it to be an integer, it does not include anything that will be after the decimal point. It is only going to include the number till uh, to till before that decimal point. So that is what is going to happen here. And that is exactly how this number, when we are trying to treat it, it uh, becomes like that you are not dividing five by two. It appears that if you are dividing four by two or something like that, this uh, scenario, this problem would always occur if you are not using the data types clearly. Sir? Yes? Mistakely. Mistake I write B equals to I N T input enter number. I don't write enter second number. Hmm. So that's fine. That's that's not a mistake. That's that's totally fine. It can happen, it can happen. That's not a mistake. Okay. So today we are we will be dealing with another type of uh, data type, and that data type is called float. Okay. So I will just give a comment here. That comment is load data type can be used to uh, represent numbers with decimal points. In simpler words, we can say that. If you want to show the numbers with decimal points, you can use the float data type. Zian, you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to ask that why did you write the uh, div equals to? Because oh, the answer came wrong. The answer came wrong. If I don't do that, maybe I would get the right answer. That's what you want to say, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, see, when we are making calculations, this is a simple calculation dividing a number A divided by B. It's a simple calculation. There is not much mechanics or there is not much you can say uh, complexity involved in that. But it's not generally like that. So when we have to make calculations, they are not actually this simple. We have to make calculations which are a bit more complex. Uh, and in order to cater to your complex calculations, what we do is that instead of directly calculating something, we make formulas for that. Okay, We represent them in the form of formulas or functions. Just for an example, 
let's say that you want to calculate the area of a rectangle you know that the area of rectangle is equal to height or length multiplied by breadth which is fine now if you want to use it one time it would be suitable for you to just write l multiplied by b but let's say that you have to use the same formula again and again and again you better turn this into a function which you can just call and start using it for example that if you want to calculate the area of a rectangle i would say that let's say um, length is equal to int input enter the length of the rectangle and this needs to be in inverted commas right and this needs to be closed as well yes enter the length of the rectangle let's say it's 23 and now you get another one which says enter the web breadth of the rectangle or width width of the rectangle and you are going to change it to width let's say And I ask you to enter the width of the rectangle and you say that it's 23.7. Now you press enter and it tells you that you have made an error. Can a, what error has it made is something that I can explain very simply. It says that you have mentioned me that width is an integer, but the number that you have entered, it's not an integer. Okay. So this can be possible that we might have to use numbers which are not integers and we might have to use the numbers which contain decimal places in them. So for keeping that thing in mind, we would have to use float data type. That is one thing. But let's say that I run this command again and now instead of entering 23.7, I enter 24. It works perfectly fine. There is no error caused due to that. But now, if I want to calculate the area, I can say that area is equal to length multiplied by width. This means that I have used a formula for area. So wherever now I want to calculate the area or wherever I want to use the area now, I can simply start using this variable's name. So instead of directly calculating it, I would be kind of just printing it so let's say if i say print area it gives me an answer which is a multiple of both of these but in this one i have only used print area i have not used length multiplied by width your question was that why would we do that why can't we simply write length multiplied by width we can do that it does not say that we can't do it it's basically that we want to keep our program simple. We do not want to make it complex. That is why we turn our complex calculations into simple variables so that we do not have to make that complex calculation again and again. We just make it only once. And whenever we want to get the result or get the answer of that calculation, we just simply write the name of the variable which stores the result instead of writing the whole formula for that calculation again. Now a uh, calculation, I can't, I'm not sure that if I can teach you guys uh, complex calculations because I think that there is one student in our class who is seven or eight at this moment. And at age seven or eight, you are not being taught how to use uh, LCM, LCF, sorry, HCF and LCM. Uh, so there are a lot of complicated so calculations. Like seven. You're seven. So you don't uh, actually get to use those complex mathematics calculation. But somehow, if let's say in future we have to use it, we should be prepared for that. I will give you one example of a complex calculation that we have to make. Let's go to Google and figure out how to convert a centigrade temperature into a Fahrenheit temperature. Okay. So who knows the difference between the centigrade and the Fahrenheit? Who has heard of these words? Do you check your temperature when you are feeling sick? 
Okay, who has checked the temperature yes. when yes. you are when you are so I have checked. Okay. So when we are not so feeling I... well and we check our temperature and we say that our temperature is 100 or 101 or 99 or 98 or 103. We are not referring to the centigrade temperature. We are referring to another temperature scale, which is called Fahrenheit. Okay. Its name is Fahrenheit. I, I always make a spelling mistake because it's spelling that a little complex. So this Fahrenheit, this is a measurement for temperature, but you will get a lot of news that today the temperature in your city was 42. 52, 52, not sorry, actually 42, 39, 38, 7, or even 2. So, this temperature scale that you are calculating it for city. Let's say that someone says that your city's temperature is, uh, your town's temperature is 37. And if someone says that your body temperature is 100, does that mean your body is three times hotter than the surroundings? Does it mean that? Do you think that it would mean that? I don't think so. We don't think. I, I actually, I used to be very confused about this when I was a kid. Until then, I got to know that there are two different scales to measure the temperatures. So, the temperatures that you measure for your city and all, that is basically centigrade temperature. That is called centigrade. Cent means 100. Okay, what does cent mean? Cent means 100. So it means that there is a scale from 0 to 100 and that is divided into 100 parts. Every part is 1 centigrade. Okay, Fahrenheit is different. Fahrenheit is basically used for to calculate temperatures of, of, of human beings when they are not feeling well. So there would want to, there would be a need that you would want to calculate, to measure that if someone has a fever or if someone does not have a fever, so in order to check that if someone is if someone has a fever or not, you check it in the Fahrenheit scale, but your temperature in the surrounding that is checked in the centigrade scale. So how do you compare centigrade scale and Fahrenheit scale? Or how do we convert from one our temperature to another temperature? That is a complex calculation that we are going to make. That is why I had to explain all these things first. So when we say that, there is a difference between them. So let's see what is the difference between them. Fahrenheit versus centigrade. So generally, 32 Fahrenheit is equal to 0 degree Celsius. But it does not mean that 64 is going to be equal to 1. Or 64 is going to be equal to 2. It does not mean that. Okay. So it is a little different. But this is degree Celsius, which is centigrade, and this is degree Fahrenheit, which is Fahrenheit. And temperature can be converted from one side to another side. There is a, a simple calculation, not a simple, but there is a there is some calculation that you can do, and this calculation is written like that. It is a, it says zero multiplied by nine divided by five, and then thirty two is added into that to convert from one temperature to another temperature. So let's say this is the formula to calculate, to convert temperature from Fahrenheit to, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we are going to do this now. There is a message in there. Hmm. So let's see that if all the kids are here. Yes, uh, Malik, you're not understanding something, uh, but I can help you with that if you want some clarity. Uh, tell me, where did you lose everything? Where did you stop understanding something? I will start explaining it from there. Actually, I would have to start it from the beginning again because I don't think that all of you are understanding it com completely. So I will do that, but I specifically want to know what is your... Uh, point where do you think that you lost it so i will actually help you more in that mm -hmm. if you want to share it zan are you understanding i hope that you are also you're not i understand you are yeah, understanding I, it's perfectly fine but i, I would 
Vajiha, that's good. Malik, I want to know your point of view also. That where do you think that uh, we lost? So I would start actually from there. Okay, now listen everyone that again, I will just reiterate it. Hamza, also you listen very carefully. Mustafa, you also ask me questions if you don't understand anything. Malik, same for you. If you don't understand something, please ask. Okay. So there are... Sir? Yes? I can't even understand one thing. I don't even know the meaning of this. Hmm, you don't even know the meaning of this. That is why I wanted to ask you guys. See, I asked you that if you can, if you know that, yes, so if whenever you get ill, you just said that you were having fever. So, how much fever are you having right now? It is related to that uh, temperature measurement that we are doing right now. Hamza, I hope that you are listening. Sir, I don't know how much. I'm not no, good no. at checking. You're not good at checking. But let's say that your parents checked it and the temperature should have been close to 100. If you have it close to 100 or more than 100, it means that you are having fever. So let's say that you are having fever and we now try to see that how much is your fever as compared to the city's temperature. Generally, what happens is that we see news and we see our mobile phones also. And there is a weather checking app also that you can see. Uh, let's say that if I write today's weather, Lahore, yes. So it says that it is 22 degrees C. See, it's what is what does it say? 22 degrees C. If you tell me that you have 100 degree temperature. When you are when you are having fever, does this mean that you are five times more hotter than the city? Do you think that it means so? A bit. A bit. No. So no, that's not how it works. It works a little differently. This temperature that you see over here is twenty two degrees C. There is one degree C element that is added here which means that it's 22 centigrades. But if let's say that if I go to this uh, chart, which says centigrade to Fahrenheit, and if I type in 22 here, because the 22 was a temperature, it means that the Fahrenheit temperature in the city is 71.6, which is close to 72 degrees. And if you are feeling what, let's say at 100 degrees, that means that you are slightly warmer than your city's temperature. You're slightly warmer than that. But <clears throat> comparing this, that can we try to make a calculator of our own, which can help us convert these numbers into, uh, you can say from centigrade to Fahrenheit. Right now you see that I am using Google to search for it and Google has a program that can help me calculate temperature from centigrade into temperature to of uh, Fahrenheit degrees. So let's say why don't we try to make a, our own program that can help us do that. So what we are doing today is we are trying to create a program which can convert between centigrade temperature and Fahrenheit temperature. This calculation is both going to be complex also and it also deals with the usage of floating points, num floating point numbers. So let's say that we start with this. 
The first thing that we need to do is see this formula. Okay. So we will try to use this formula and copy this. I will paste it here. So this is my reference formula that I need to use. And I want to calculate that how a number is, how a centigrade temperature can be converted into uh, the temperature of Fahrenheit degrees. So currently this is the formula that we have. This says, this says that if you have any temperature in centigrades and you multiply it with nine divided by five and add 32 in that, this will be converted into the Fahrenheit temperature. So let's just give it a try. So currently, sir, after, sir, after this, after zero, it's a small cycle. We don't need to use that. We just are going to follow this formula here. How many alphabets do you see in so this I, formula? I'm writing that. No, the you don't need to write that. You don't need to write the first one. You just need to write this second one. Tell okay. me one thing. How many alphabets do you see are in here? Hamza, how many alphabets are there? Two. Sir, two. Malik, can you also tell me that how many alphabets are there in this second line? There are two alphabets, right? The alphabet on the left side is F. So I'm going to take it as F. And this right one, I'm going to take it as C. I want this one to be entered by the user. I want C value to be entered by the user. Let's see how we can do that. We can tell that C is equal to input and the user will enter a value here. So let's say, I would say, enter the centigrade temperature. Okay. So a user can enter anything into that. Let's say, this is something that a user can enter. Currently, it did not say that if it was a number so or something. Where is multiply like that. sign? Where is multiply sign? Okay. So, this multiply sign, if you can't get it, you can write X for that right now. Okay. And now I want to see that what F is equal to. F is equal to this formula. How can I add this formula? Let's see. In order to get this formula, I would have to type in that C multiplied by nine divided by five plus 32. It tells me that there is a trace back error which says unsupported operand type for str and int. This operand type cannot be used if you are using int or something or string or something. So maybe we need to make some changes in this one. We need to tell that this is not an integer and this is also not a string. We need to tell them that this is a number, but this number can have decimal points in that. And for those numbers that can have decimal points in that, you are going to use this keyword. So now where you were declaring C in this one, I would have to type this one again, but I would have to type it more carefully so that I include something that is supposed to be here. And that's something that we need to add here is float F L O A T. It, it will go with the start and like that. So basically you are going to write it something like this. You are going to say that C is equal to float and the float value is going to be input by the user. And when it would be input, it would have a message, enter the centigrade temperature on screen. Okay, so this temperature, centigrade temperature symbol should be there. Currently, it needs to be closed. And now you have it. It says enter the centigrade temperature. You can write 23.34. Anything that you want to enter, you can do that. 
After that, we will go with this formula once again. Now we want to calculate the temperature in Fahrenheit and that is equal to F. We would say F is equal to C multiplied by 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Now it does not give me that error. I use everything the same way. But before the first, in the first part, I have not told my computer that I want to deal in a number which would have decimal places in that. But now I have used an explanation that tells that I am going to use a number which has decimal places in that. And that is exactly how it is going to be calculated. And I can initially also say that, that this number is also going to be float, but it is not needed if you have already declared it. But you can also do it like this also. You can tell that this is the float number and you can close it. So now you can say that if we want to, to calculate the temperature, this one into the temperature, that we have um, in foreign height, we would say that the temp in foreign height is, and that would be equal to F. So now let's see what it is. It says if we had 23.34 temperature, it is going to be 74.012 in foreign height. Let's just check that if our calculation is correct. So in order to check this calculation where we can go, we can go here on Google. It says the temperature that we selected was 23.34. And now you can say that Google also says that our calculation is perfectly fine. Okay. Don't worry, this meeting will end in a, this meeting is going to end in one minute and I'm going to rejoin after that. You guys can also rejoin and we will explain this once again. We will get through this once again so that we clearly understand that why do we use float keyword here. Okay. Try to complete it. If you can't do it, we will have more time for that. So I have a question. Yes. That uh, if we add the plus 32 uh, outside the bracket, will the error happen? What, what did you say? If we? Add, uh, 32 add, outside the bracket. And add another bracket will it ever happen? It will still work the same way. It will still work the same way. There would be no difference in that. See, even if you uh, do this, even if you do this uh, like that, okay, why not let's uh, restart the meeting and then we'll discuss it again.